there are three main ways that caves can be formed. One form of cave is called a lava flow tube. These are created where the flow of molten lava from a volcano cools solid on the outside, while the hot inner material continues to flow and leaves a space or hollow canal which follows the base of the lava flow. There are none of these in the limestone coast area, but some close by in western Victoria. These dramatic caves shown are at Bioduck, near Hamilton and at Mount Eccles. A second type is a sea cave formed in cliffs by wave action. These are the caves featured in children's adventure stories of smugglers or pirates. And the animated film shows one in the process of being formed by the surge of waves into soft rock. And a real one in process of being formed at Blackfellas Caves on the southern coast. However, by far the greater number of caves all over the world are dissolved limestone caves. And, as one might expect, they abound in this region called the Limestone Coast. In places, the limestone is 300 metres thick. Pure water does not readily dissolve limestone, but rainwater becomes slightly acid when it picks up carbon dioxide from the air and soil. This acid water eats away at limestone and trickles through cracks in the rock, making them wider. Frequently, vertical tubes or pipes result, through which, after heavy rain, both soft rock and sand may wash away. This can make a small cave larger and the water may form an underground stream in its path to the water table level. Finally, over hundreds or thousands and even millions of years, a cave is formed as we know it today. If the land rises or the water table drops, rainwater may continue to seep through into the dry cavern, carrying lime in solution as calcium bicarbonate. As this water drips from the roof of the cavern, the solution loses some of its carbon dioxide and reverts to limestone, that is calcium carbonate, whose fine particles slowly collect to form crystalline cave formations called stalactites. If this solution falls from the stalactite to the floor of the cavern, it may form a pinnacle shape which slowly builds upward and is called a stalagmite. Most of the 700 or so recorded caves in the limestone coast area are geologically fairly young or relatively dry, so if they have any stalactite formations at all, they are small ones only, like these shown in the Parun cave near Mount Gambia. Yet the older caves, as at Naracourt or Tantanula, have ancient and beautiful displays of stalactite formations, often richly coloured by iron salt contamination from the terra rosa soils above. Some can form into strange, exotic shapes, resembling curtains or draped fabric, like a shawl. The Tantanula Cave is a bit unusual that it started its existence as a sea cave in a cliff when the sea level was much higher, more than a hundred thousand years ago. The entrance to the sea cave formation collapsed, closing it off. Then the cave developed in the manner of the standard limestone cave, with water trickling down through cracks to form this fantasy forest of stalactite and stalagmite shapes. Because limestone is made up of sea animals and calcareous plant remains, it often has abundant fossils, and at times a limestone layer is entirely composed of fossils of complete marine communities, which can be a whole reef, shoal or shell bank. 
Here we see a section of cave sediment with penguin bones embedded among fossils of other life forms from perhaps a couple of hundred thousand years ago. While at the Narracourt Fossil Cave, members of various species of animals which are now extinct fell into caves, leaving their fossilised bones for the scientists to dig out and puzzle over. In other places in the region where the water table was high, the movement of acid water created quite large caverns close to the surface, and in some places the roof fell in, creating sinkholes open to the surface. The famous Umphiston sinkhole is one example. Or this giant sink called Hell's Hole at Caroline, near Mount Gambia. Aboriginal people secured their water from some of these sinkholes, notably from what is now called the Cave Gardens in the Mount Gambia city centre, but there is little evidence of them sheltering or living in these places. However, as a secure place to leave artworks, telling tribal stories or sociological records, caves have been great for beautifully preserving engravings as old as 32,000 years and which are still in great condition.